Hey, Evan Nathaniel Grimm here, and today I'm going to talk about August 2022, what's going to happen for all 12 sun, moon, and rising signs. So I'm going to share my screen um, so that we can walk through these transits together. Um, now, uh, before I start, though, just want to highlight the fact that I've just launched an introductory astrology course. Uh, the link is down below in the description box, and um, this course is really about mastering the fundamentals of astrology. So we're talking about the, the why question, what is the purpose of astrology, how is it benefiting you, uh, and then also the building blocks of the elements, and the dualities, and the modalities, etc. Then going into the signs themselves, the planets, and then how to think through the birth chart, how to kind of like orient your mind so that you can master the birth chart very quickly. And then by the final class, we're actually starting to develop these interpretive techniques and really build that specialization. So this course is, um, you know, very unique. It's coming straight from sort of my, it's, it's really my perspective and my blueprint for how I was able to absorb astrology so quickly. Uh, so I would highly recommend looking into it and you can email me with questions. So right now for the sake of kind of clarity, um, I'm picking the middle of August. I'm going to contextualize this with the beginning and the end of August as well. But in terms of like what you're seeing on the screen, you know, this is August 16th, essentially the middle, the middle of um, that month. And, you know, um, the, 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 there's a couple of things that are happening in August to just that are noteworthy, including the entrance of Mars into Gemini. So that kicks off a seven month saga of Mars, you know, going all the way almost through Gemini, then retrograding at the end of the year and then back forward and direct into next spring. So while Mars is in Gemini, we really want to pay attention to August 20th. And I'll talk about that at the end of this video, but like the ingress of Mars into Gemini is very powerful um, because the minute like the literal minute that it enters Gemini, the moon is exactly where it was on the new moon in Gemini this, this summer. So it's like, there's a lot of like bizarre synchronicities to that. But as Mars enters Gemini, the focus and the energy starts to shift towards local activities, um, but also reading, writing, learning, communicating, maybe communicating online, uh, debating political ideas, maybe, or just debating um, the facts of something. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people are going to start thinking local and that could be from gas prices. That could be from the economy that could be from the supply chain breaking down. Um, but there is some type of relying, you're relying on the people around you a little bit more than you used to. You're just interfacing with them, but that's going to impact each rising, each rising sign differently. Now I'm using the rising signs as I go through this forecast, but a lot of the time, it's not impossible for people with like their sun or moon in these rising signs to kind of feel similar effects. But I do want to, I do want to emphasize this point. Like technically speaking, you should really pay attention to the rising sign as I'm going through this forecast. But again, there could be some correspondences to your sun or moon sign in that same, in that same sign. But of course, for, you know, as a professional astrologer, it really makes the most sense to be going off your rising sign. So let's start with Aries rising. So for Aries risings, again, looking at the middle of August, and then we'll kind of work our way around it. You know, you have, you still have Leo season underway, right? So like the sun is shining a light on your fifth house. And so that's a very natural place, of course, for the sun to be during Leo season in that fifth house. Um, so, you know, this as an Aries rising is still continuing to be a good time to invest in your creative side, your creative projects, um, what is bringing out that inner joy within. So, you know, doing anything that you love to do, you have to make time for that. Um, you know, at the same time, you know, Mercury will be in Virgo. So it's like, you're feeling very efficient and organized and, and kind of practical it's, and strategic really. Right. But when we combine Venus and the sun in Leo with Mercury in Virgo, this could actually be a nice um, time for, for you to really focus again on like, what is it, what, what is, what are those things that you love to do, but also how can you specialize and, 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 and refine those skill sets? So it's like, I love to play the violin, but I also want to practice it six hours a day. That's where Virgo comes in. So 
you know, that, that will definitely be at play. Um, but then in terms of the nodes, right, the nodal axis continues to be in Scorpio, Virgo, and that's really highlighting your second house for the most part. I mean, this chart, I'm using a Placida system, but like you really want to think about, you know, for the sake of every Aries rising, right? Like a lot of you will have this node in your second house and the second house continues to be the focus for you overall. Like the North node is really the spear point where you can grow and build, um, you know, accumulate positive karma, you know, you're elucidating your life path in some way. So for Aries Risings, you know, it's still about like your money situation, your value systems. Um, and with Mars there, it's like your energy is going into those things. And it's almost like you get your, e your, your, your sense of like vitality, but even like your ego, your sense of like self-worth right now is still very tied to like your, your financial earnings, but also your possessions. And even again, like having enough of whatever you value. So it's like, if you value time over money, then it's like, maybe it's just that you have, you know, now you feel like you need more time, right? Like if that's what you value, make more time for yourself. Um, now, another thing to keep in mind here as an Aries rising, um, you know, Jupiter, is kind of, for some of you, it's in the first house, others it's in the 12th. So for those of you, like for example, this was your rising sign, the 18th degree, and you're using Placidus, it's you know very much still expanding your dream world. And actually a lot of your dreams are quite clairvoyant. So if you're in Aries rising with Jupiter in the 12th right now, as it's retrograding, it's like you're reflecting and your dreams are very retrospective, but also giving you clues in that past about what it portends for the future. So these dreams are still leading indicators of what might happen, but they're pulling from the past. Um, and also it's like you're elevating, enlightening, transcending, ascending. Like these are all nice Jupiter 12th house matters. But if it's in that 12th house, you do want to make sure that you're not like totally just escaping and withdrawing, right? You want to do this, use this for good. But for other areas risings, you have Jupiter in the first. So it's like there's a new there's a confidence that you're bringing out still this month, uh, but it is ret Jupiter's retrograde. So you kind of have to look more internally and reflect on what were the opportunities that I've had since May 10th when Jupiter entered Aries. So think back to like, this almost is a time to rehash that. So it's like since May 10th, uh, quite a few Aries risings have right have had Jupiter in that first house, which means you're attracting opportunities just by appearing confident to people, appearing generous, appearing like you're open to opportunities. So people give you them. But, you know, when it's retrograding, it's like you're doing a double take on like, what was that conversation I had at the airport? What was that, that random person, like that really good first impression I made that I didn't really act on. I didn't finish that in that conversation with that person. So this is your time to wrap up and double, double back to those opportunities that were very spontaneous that happened between May 10th and now. Um, so uh, as an Aries as well, you do have Saturn in the 11th house, um, this month, but it's retrograde. So again, you're continuing to reflect internally on where do you want to take on more responsibility and where do you have more work to do in groups? You know, the 11th house is these groups, these networks, these organizations. And so your affiliations are still under the, under the microscope, you're scrutinizing Saturn is trying to master something in this area. So it's like, have you had struggles with, you know, kind of immersing yourself in these groups or these friend groups, these social circles, these organizations? Um, <clears throat> it's that you're doubling back on some efforts that you made in, um, you know, really in, um, I want to say like, when would that have been? Maybe like early April, uh, late March. So sometime in the spring, you know, you're, you're really reflecting on those efforts and then doubling back on those. And then the final thing here for Aries rising, the full moon in this cycle is in the 11th house. <clears throat> so uh, we had the new moon in Leo on July 28th in your fifth house. So that's the birth of a new or maybe even a rekindling of a creative passion or maybe even a first date. Uh, that, that, that occurred, but, um, you know, the full moon is going to be conjunct to Saturn. So in that 11th house, the full moon is a, a realization and an awareness of what you really need to commit to in that 11th house. So what type of groups, again, like where can you take that responsibility and eventually build up this um, sort of reliability in the eyes of the group? So it's like, 
you know, they can see that commitment. They can see that you're able to kind of mask, be a taskmaster. And so over time, that could be a gift that could pay off for you where it's like, you know, I'm ready to step up in any way into that group. But one thing I do want to mention, anytime the full moon is on, is conjunct to Saturn, which I just had in the Capricorn full moon was exactly conjunct to my, my, my natal Saturn. You know, I let go of a lot of responsibilities. Like that was my last week at my corporate job. You know, I was really in, um, I was interfacing with a lot of people who I no longer have responsibilities for towards. Like all these people who used to ask me for things at work, who asked me to do things, I was like completely disconnecting and untethering and letting go of those responsibilities. So I kind of feel like in a, in a collective sense here, this Aquarius full moon is really people's, uh, will be a shedding, a shedding of certain uh, responsibilities. So if we even go back to that, that full moon, which um, is a few days earlier, we can find it here. Um, you know, we, right there, right? So as an area is rising, that is really happening in the 11th house. So it's like, again, during the Saturn retrograde, it's like you're finding the groups that you really need to belong to that are sustainable for you as you, you know, these groups that where you can claim more responsibility, but simultaneously you are letting go of of maybe the some other groups you're making you have to make space maybe for those new organizations and networks and you're you're gonna figure out at this time on the 11th of august like where do you have to um commit you're not gonna be able to commit to everything here maybe you have multiple friend groups you're trying to balance multiple again charitable organizations you're trying to be a part of it's like what do you want to commit to that will actually build sustainable progress so i think that's interesting and then as mars enters gemini at the end of august that will activate your third house. And the third house is very comfortable with learning and soaking up new knowledge, new subjects, new material. So it's like, you're really firing on all cylinders there. And you know this, that would be a good time to invest in, again, learning something new, uh, writing, uh, just a lot of local communication. Um, so, so I think that's, <clears throat> I think that's a, a pretty solid situation for you. Uh, so let me find, Taurus rising now. So here we have Taurus rising. So in August, again, we still have Mars and Taurus. Taurus risings are um, really asserting this new version of themselves. I mean, a lot of Taurus risings have had this, are going through this reinvention of sorts. You know, anytime the Uranus is on the Ascendant, that's a rare occurrence, right? That's only once in 84 years. And so when Uranus is on the Ascendant, it's provocation for change. It's like you have no choice but to completely reassemble the way that you present yourself to people, you know, and, and it's usually for the best. It's like Uranus in the first is just, is, it's just like a liberation from past conditioning. And a lot of times the rising sign is something that we really were molded. We molded into that rising sign as a child. Like when we were younger, it's like we really embodied our rising sign because in a progress chart, it, it doesn't really, a progress chart eventually your rising sign changes but before your chart as before your chart really progresses too far it's like you really are embodying that rising sign so taurus risings will have this very taurus like stable grounded nature loving quality when they're young and sometimes it's like they eventually become a gemini rising right like they all become a gemini rising eventually so eventually you become more social and intellectually curious but right now with Uranus here, it's like accelerating you forward in a way that, you know, is, is a little bit destabilizing, right? Because Taurus risings are very interested in that sort of anchoring to something, being very stable and grounded. But Uranus is provoking this change, uh, almost like it's this impulse to change. And so Taurus risings, I still think throughout this year, I mean, you're really just, again, untethering yourself from things releasing attachments because you have no choice again it's just like you're catapulting forward so there's a futuristic mindset taurus risings even into august um and so that you know is 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 i can see how that would be a little challenging for taurus risings but you just want to hang in there because once mars enters gemini it's going to give you a little bit of relief i think because it's almost like there's so much frenetic energy right now that as we head in like towards the later end of August, Mars enters your second house, which is like, 
okay, the second house is associated with Taurus. So now we have a little bit more groundedness coming in, a little bit more focus on money matters or material possessions, more focus on even going out into nature to ground ourselves and reattach and reattaching in a way. So like Uranus has forced you to release and kind of eject into a new stratosphere, but now eventually at the end of August, Mars will, um, you know, kind of double down this theme of like, okay, I need an anchor. I need a value system that I can fix myself to, affix myself to. Now the, the, the Aquarius full moon is in your 10th house though. So I think for Taurus risings, August will be shaped by this full moon. You know, August will be a surrendering and a letting go of responsibilities in the career. Like this is like, that is like where this full moon almost to me, like apart from the 11th house is where it would naturally express itself. You know, because Saturn and the 10th for Taurus Risings, like you've been really under, you know, you've been under a lot of pressure in your career. Tor like Saturn and the 10th doesn't mess around. It's, it, it's, and even during this retrograde, it's like these managers, these executives around you, it's like, why is everyone double checking my work? Like, this is so outrageous. So it's like, maybe you're letting go of a career this month, but the North Node is, um, you know, in your first house, on your Ascendant. So I think it's for the best. It's helping you to step into your authenticity. So, so um, you know, really, really focus on that. So I do want to, I do want to keep going through the rising signs, though. So um, heading into Gemini rising. Now, I've, I've done some TikToks about this. Gemini's are absolutely going through this sort of bewildering dream life. Like they're navigating this dream life that is just so overpowering that it's like they they're overlapped. The dream world and the real world are overlapped for Gemini Risings. And it's just, you know, you kind of have to just embrace that because your North Node is there. So it's like the focus is on spiritual matters. The focus is on um, getting out of 3D and connecting and feeling some type of solidarity with the collective or the cosmos. You know, that's what the 12th house with the North Node will help you do. And because of that, you're focused away from work. You're focused very much away from your work life. Um, so that's okay, right? Like as a Gemini, it's like, if you can't concentrate on your day-to-day -day responsibilities, I, I don't really think that that's, that's not unnatural. Like, it's almost like your energy is better served, like, you know, by investing in your imagination, in your dreams, and connecting the messages around you. Because a lot of the 12th house is about synchronicities and patterns and like noticing numbers, noticing the way the light breaks through the window, noticing, um, you know, that you get the same cards, you know, in tarot, like everything is starting to feel like it's stacking up. Like you're getting the same message over and over and you have to listen to that. And you can't let, you can't shut out those messages because they have something to teach you there. Right. So like, if you're getting a community, if you're getting communication from like a plant, right. Or a tree, it's like, you don't want to shut that out, that, that possibility out. Cause there is a chance that you're connecting with something again, that's outside of yourself. That's transcendent. Um, now in this, again, again, in this screenshot, I have the Saturn moon, the, the full moon on Saturn is on your midheaven, And that's not impossible, right? Some Gemini's will have a trine midheaven like this. And so Gemini's might be going through the same thing as Taurus is just a very visible public surrendering of, of, um, you know, responsibility and letting these structures kind of win away, but for the sake, in this case of your spiritual mission, it's kind of like, yeah, it's like the, the boss is asking you like, why are you late? Why aren't you here at nine o'clock? And it's like, I'm, I'm too busy. Like I, I'm, I'm on a different timeline now. I'm not moving at the same pace as everyone else. So you really, you really want to be mindful of this and embrace this. Do not resist this because, you know, I had the North node in my 12th house two years ago as a cancer rising. And like, it, it, it was, yeah, it was a little bit bizarre, you know, a lot of uncanny things and unexplainable things and phenomena, but I picked up, you know, astrology very quickly because of that. So um, it can be powerful, but for a lot of people who don't follow astrology, it's just like, they're probably just assume that they have like some kind of sleep issue or, you know, that's causing them to like really experience these, these types of things, but it's, it's all very real. 
But for other Gemini risings, this full moon is in the ninth house. So that is a letting go or even a culmination of something in your uh, studies. Maybe you're letting go of a course program or a school, like an academic track. You're realizing that you don't want to commit to this anymore. Or, you know, even the full moon, again, it can be this blossoming of something. So it's not that everybody's necessarily letting go of responsibility. It could actually also be that the thing that you're incrementally working towards with Saturn is finally coming to fruition. So it's like you could achieve. It's like a high stakes moon, right? It's like either you're achieving this. This is a crowning achievement or this is that that moment when the scaffolding starts to come down. So, again. For Gemini Risings, this could even be like an accreditation, a diploma, a degree, some type of proof of your hard work, um, you know, or it's like this new worldview that, or this new like, you know, ethical code, this worldview that you've really been building up towards, you know, very virtuously through maybe stoicism or something, because Saturn is quite stoic in the ninth house, right? It's like withholding, it's abstaining from things right it's like a, this belief system that's just very like ironclad and so it's like with the full moon there it's like maybe you're realizing you're realizing that 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 sort of there's that philosophy that you've kind of solidified now it's like okay you know i feel very confident in like the way that i want to move through the world the way that i want to explore the world and even for some of you it could even it could even be like just stepping into this role as a teacher stepping into this role as someone who's you know has a message to convey. And then even if we're getting into that space, like publishing, publishing something, if you're a, a writer, I don't hate that full moon for, for, for that either. So um, Cancer Risings, um, you know, Cancer Risings continue to have a very public facing chart. Cancer Risings are just out front right now because, you know, you look at all these outer planets, they're all in the upper half, like every, including the North Node. So cancers have to invest in their social media life, their networks, their organizations they want to belong to. They're building these entirely new friend groups, especially with Uranus there. They're, re, they're resetting. It's like a lot of cancer risings, their social lives changed um, in the last year, like so dramatically. And even going before that, um, Neptune is still in your 10th, Jupiter's in your 10th. Like there's this like grandiosity to you and um you know, you can play this role as a teacher as well. Any, anytime Jupiter's in the 10th, it's like, again, you're, you're a trusted voice, a trusted source for people. So it's like a good time to embody the Jupiterian and the Neptunian energy as like a spiritual teacher. Um, and uh, with that North Node, it's like you're making a lot of progress in, again, either your social media life or in your role as a networker, as a, as a friend. I mean, you know, you're starting to find the right people. Like, you know, I think a lot of Cancer Risings are just finding their community right now. And it's just vastly different from where they were before. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, the, the full moon here is going to be, you know, probably in the eighth house for a lot of you. And Saturn in the eighth has not been easy for Cancer Risings. It's like, you know, you've been peeling back the layers of the onion and shedding foundations, letting go of structures like throughout the last two years since late 2020. And so, you know, this is a full moon when, um, you know, I would actually see this as maybe an investment. It's like, if you're a business owner, this would be when you kind of put, you put the loose, you tie up the loose ends on like a business idea, you found the business, um, you know, with Saturn there, it's like Saturn the eighth, a lot of Cancer Risings have been working on starting this business, I think. So, um, you know, with that full moon, it is that culmination. Uh, but also maybe like letting go of an investment and, 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 and getting rid of it. But I think that it's almost like you also realize like what you still need to kind of work on and, and part ways with, because, you know, with the Saturn and the eighth, it's like, it is the breakdown before the breakthrough. So this full moon for cancer risings, I don't think it's that easy. I really don't. I think for most cancer risings, it's just like this coming to terms with, the harsh reality of something. I mean, that's Saturn too, right? Saturn is the harsh reality. So the full moon might be illuminating that for everyone. But I think for Cancer Risings, it's especially daunting because in the eighth house, Saturn leaves us with no choice but to 
commit to overcoming these fears and, and also commit to, again, um, just again, letting go, letting go of what's not serving us anymore. So, so cancer rising you got to kind of hang in there and just be really resilient. I think you'll learn a lot from this full moon about where your true strength lies. Uh, so I think you'll come out with a better sense of like, you know, even how to, you like how to see these things coming. But, you know, if you're in the eighth house with Saturn, you also do want to be like careful with, if you're a business owner, like how do you navigate your business? Have you like, you know, done the, like worked on, the, have you read the contracts fully? Have you worked on your taxes? Like, cause Saturn can scrutinize those things in the eighth house. It can scrutinize investments and business matters. So really, really keep that in mind. Um, so now we enter Leo, Venus and Leo happening on August 12th. Venus on the ascendant in mid-August, like very good for appearing, like bringing out your creative side, um, attracting people into your orbits. You know, Venus on the ascendant is very good for starting a relationship. And then, um, you know, when we think about Jupiter in the ninth, where it's been for a while, like that's also very expansive, expanding your philosophy, um, taking new chances on maybe new courses or traveling to new places. But in this case, the full moon in Saturn, it's happening in your seventh house pretty much. And, you know, the, the Saturn in the seventh house asp, uh, placement, I mean, that has been certainly a little bit probably challenging for Leo's. Leo risings have felt a little bit alienated and isolated in their relationships or isolated from somebody. I don't think that that's the easiest. It's just not the easiest transit. Not as hard as Saturn in the eighth, but you might be feeling like there is this relationship that's ending. And on the full moon conjunct Saturn, it's kind of dawned on you that it's no longer escapable. It's inescapably and undeniable that you maybe aren't ready or you can't commit to this relationship anymore. So if you're a Leo rising watching this and you feel like, you know, that relationship is becoming too much of a burden, I think it might just, it might just end might just end around this full moon. And um, for others though, it could be a realization that you're ready to commit to this relationship, but Saturn is very uh, stressful because it's like, it's all or nothing. It's like, you're committing to this, either you're marrying them, committing to this person or you're not. And so this dawns on you is like, is this sustainable? Um, is this sustainable or not? So um, think about, think about that. And in, in, in even like with, you know, the seventh house being significant friendships, it could be a parting ways with a friend, um, but also a business partner could be involved for you. Again, if you're a business owner, um, this could be um, seeing a, a business partnership through and realizing that it's run its course. So relationships of all kinds are under some pressure there. Um, and you know, the Mars Gemini, by the way, for cancer risings, I forgot to mention is going to be activating your spiritual side. And then for Leo risings, your social life. So I don't hate, you know, even though this full moon, you know, is kind of maybe forcing a sacrifice of sorts in a significant relationship, Mars and Gemini will give you enough steam, I think, to build out your social life, your networks, and should, should give you some levity and kind of a refuge from that really tough Saturn placement. So uh, getting into Virgo, Virgo risings are, um, you know, Virgo risings are kind of, they were in a very, you were in a very interesting spot like a month or like a month or so ago when like Jupiter and Mars were in your eighth, just tons of expansiveness in your investment life. Just like putting a lot of energy into investments and assets and, and wealth creation. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis other people's resources or, or stocks or, you know, or, or whatnot. But now it's like Mars is taking you to a more inquisitive place in the ninth house. It's been in Taurus now. So it's like you're thinking about traveling, venturing out, exploring. And now in August, this Aquarius energy is, um, you know, Saturn retrograde in the sixth. Middle managers are just a pain right now. I mean, you know. I don't, you know, I do think Saturn in the sixth is one of the harder placements for Saturn. It's one of the harder houses to navigate with Saturn because it's like Saturn in the sixth points out all the inefficiencies in your life, all the ways in which your health routine, 
has faltered, all the ways in which your, yeah, your day-to-day is compromised. And middle managers are scrutinizing you. So it's like, you know, your coworkers just feel like really, really cold and non-nurturing. Like your work environment is not nurturing at all. But again, in your day-to-day life, you have to think about yourself as a machine right now. Saturn the sixth, like this full moon is illuminating that. It's putting the focus on your sixth house and saying like, okay, what process in my daily, daily life is, is, where am I going wrong here? Like, it's almost like you're trying to do, like come up with a life hack. How can I like redesign my day to day such that I accomplish a lot more? I feel a lot better, like health wise. Um, you know, what do I need to do to really um, become a practitioner and specialize and become the best at something? Because that's what Saturn in the sixth is trying to help you do. So even like through these middle managers who are really annoying, it's like they're teaching you almost what not to do and what to do. And so through this process, it's like, I think it's full moon. It's like some type of relationship with a manager or coworker could be coming to a head. Um, or again, it's like, there's a realization of how much more you have to commit to your health and your exercise and your, you know, you, you know, this is a, this is a house of healing and it's also a house of service, by the way. So this full moon is accenting, like, what is the hard skills that I want to provide to the world? Um, and then when Mars enters Gemini, that's going to be in your 10th house. So a lot of public action. So actually investing in your career at the same time that these coworkers are, are kind of difficult, right? There's a lot of, it's almost like a, uh, uh, resistance training in the sixth house there, but at the same time, you know, you're able to activate, I think ultimately some positive growth in your career with Mars up there for seven months. Um, <clears throat> Now, Libra Risings, uh, this is all in your eighth house. This, you know, Mars, Uranus, North Node energy. So it's like you've been focused on transformation and maybe through like therapeutics, talk therapy or whatever, whatever it is, right? Like you've been like talking to people. You've been trying to figure out what's going on in my subconscious and trying to, to root cause that and uproot it. Um, but yeah, I mean, Mars and Gemini in the ninth is eventually going to happen so there will be a similar thing with Virgo risings of like what they're going through now of like wanting to venture out invest in new studies um but uh you know jupiter is on the descendant for some of you right now so that's good for new relationships very helpful business partners um but then saturn's in your fifth testing your creative process testing your ability to entertain people you know like a lot of people with saturn the fifth like they'll have like big performances during this time um or they might feel like they have writer's block for a while but then it's like they had they play like this amazing concert uh as if you were like a musician for example but for anyone it's like saturn is is forcing you to really think about okay what's a creative hobby that i can actually commit to like i gotta get serious right wherever Saturn is it's like that's where you have to get serious and that's where your responsibilities partly lie so Saturn the fifth is telling you again you can't do it all you have to really am I a musician or am I a painter am I an actor and the full moon here is accenting that so the full moon in the fifth is um, again it's like a creative project that you're seeing through and with Saturn, there's achievement potential. So if you're a Libra rising who's been working on a song or working on a play, or working on a script, I, I kind of feel like this, this full moon could actually be quite good for you. And Libra risings, I mean, you, got, you all need some like relief here. I, I kind of feel like this eighth house is really, you know, it's really intense. And it's just, again, it's, it's about facing fears and facing subconscious memories, recovering subconscious memories that's not very fun sometimes. Right. So, uh, but it could be good for your investment, right? You know, the eighth house is about investments. Although if you're honest there, it's a little topsy turvy at times, but yeah, the full moon and the fifth, um, I think is, is, is going to help you recover maybe your inner joy. Right. So, so, um, let's jump into Scorpio. 
Scorpio Risings. Scorpio Risings relationship upheaval has been the theme for you all year, or really for a while with Uranus there. Um, and with Mars conjunct, it's like very reckless. It's like, I'm just going to break off from this relationship or I'm going to jump into a new one. It's unpredictable. It's like just as quickly as a new partner can enter your life, they can leave. Like that's how, that's how Uranus is in the seventh. Uh, but the full moon in the fourth, you know, where it is for a lot of you. I kind of think of that as like a time to move, a time to let go of like a home base. You know, you have this home base or you're committing to living with someone new or, um, you know, just like, you know, you're probably doing something here to fit. You feel like you have a different responsibility to your home life or even to your family. And so the full moon here could be, it's like, okay, I really need to figure out my living situation. And like, I need to host, I need to have a sublet. I need someone to sublet my extra room. Or it's like, I need to figure out if I'm going to live in the same town as my family or not. You know, like that, that, I can see how for Scorpio rising, so this could be a tough time because like Mars Uranus in the seventh is a little bit chaotic. It's like, you don't really know where your relationships are going sometimes, but at the same time, Saturn on the, in the full moon in the fourth is like, okay, but you have to commit. What is your nest? What does your nest look like? And so it's like, how do you navigate that while your relationship is a little bit unstable? I'm not saying that every Scorpio rising is going to break up or something, but I do want you to be mindful of that. Um, that, that, that urge, like, is there an urge deep down to change up your relationships? It's completely possible. You have to be able to access that and, and come to terms with that. It is possible that you're just like, you know, I met this person a year ago. They're like pretty good for me. But we haven't said, I love you yet or whatever. Like we haven't exchanged any kind of, we haven't taken the next step. This conjunction of Mars and Uranus is like, face it, right? Like it's probably not going to work. But at the same time, right? But at the same time, it's like they might be saying, but I want you to live with me. That's a, you know, that's a, that's a crossroads. But again, for some people who aren't in relationships, it could just be a family saying, you know, do you want to stay? You, you should stay in the hometown. But you getting a job somewhere else. So that full moon will, will kind of force a commitment. So just anticipate that. Anticipate that uh, as we go through the month. Sag Risings. Um, yeah, I mean, Sag Risings are kind of like Leo Risings. Like the, the work life is a little chaotic and unpredictable. And like coworkers are just driving you up a wall. You know, it's not the easiest right now, but um, but you are reinventing your daily health routine, your regimen, uh, your work style. Um, you could also be working with technology in a new way in your day-to-day. -day. Um, but the full moon in... Um, Aquarius here is um, in your third house <clears throat> of communication and learning. So I don't know. I could see some sad risings taking a, taking an exam if you're studying for something. You could be taking a really important test in the middle of August or um, committing to a new course uh, plan, um, a new subject, or you know, Saturn in the third you know, oftentimes makes people just kind of think and feel pessimistic. Uh, so the full moon there is maybe not the easiest. It's like, maybe it's like highlighting why you feel stuck or where your, your, your learning process needs an upgrade, or it's like where you feel like you're lacking in something like you're, you're going to feel like maybe you're lacking in a certain knowledge base. And so you want to start to commit to um to learning more in that area but for writers this could be a very good placement for finishing off a writing project um you know seeing it through handing it off to your editor um and and again um in that third house too you're dealing with your local environment in some way um you know the third house is just like really daily day-to-day -day communication so i don't know i mean the full moon there 
it's not necessarily a huge deal, but it is illuminating this pressure that you feel to learn more and to prove yourself as a, you know, prove yourself in the mental domains of like, do you have the facts? Are you correct about these things? Like, do you need to go back to the drawing board? Right. So like I, I could, so again, it could be big. It could be a commitment to a new educational path. Um, and in Aquarius, maybe technology, maybe te it's a technological path. Um, but yeah, just for a lot of you, Jupiter's in the fourth into the fifth house. That's pretty fun. Great for, for uh, dates. And then your focus is in that sixth house, though, ultimately, right? Like your sixth, your routines and those responsibilities. Um, and into, into Capricorn, Capricorn is... Uh, it depends again on the house system that we're using here, but Capricorns are really grappling with Saturn in the second. And that makes us feel, that makes you feel very insecure financially. Even if you have enough money, it's like Saturn in the second is going to feel like I have to concentrate on building my own savings, building my own like kind of, you know, stable financial situation here. And the full moon here is like, again, showing you where you've hit a, like where you need to course correct in your financial life. Cause Saturn is a wall. Saturn is a limit. And it's saying like, okay, you hit a dead end. You might've hit a dead end where it's like, maybe I'm just, I'm not accumulating enough anymore. I need to find new avenues to wealth creation. So yeah, this full moon is not, I don't know. I mean, I think this full moon is just, a, could be very difficult for everybody just because of that conjunction of Saturn. But it is, it is doing you a favor, right? Because it's like, it's pointing you towards your responsibilities and saying like, if you don't turn things around now, it's going to get a lot worse. That's what Saturn is, right? Saturn is that judge. It's that judge, it's judging us. And we don't want to hear it necessarily, but it's like, we needed that tough love. So this is happening in your second house. So it's just like, all right, I need to reset. I need to do what I need. I need to commit to a career that gets me enough money. So you're definitely crescendoing to that. Um, and then eventually Mars will be in your fifth and then maybe into your sixth house a little bit and in later August. And so that's putting energy into creative pursuits and, you know, the health routines of the sixth house. All right. So just two more to go, uh, Aquarius Risings. The full moon in the first um, is usually a culmination of something, an aware, a, new, a newfound awareness about the self, about how, and with Saturn, it's like, how am I defined in the society, right? So as a, in the first house with Saturn, it's like, my identity is, is entangled in society's perception of so it's like, am I a data analyst, my computer scientist, my doctor, my lawyer? That is up for scrutiny, right? So that full moon for you is basically saying it's a referendum on who you've chosen to become. So if you're dissatisfied with, with the person that you are in the eyes of society, you're going to feel very self-conscious and self-aware at this time. It's like, okay. I thought I could kind of skate by as, you know, um, this kind of career. But now I realize that I just can't, I just can't commit to it anymore. It's, it's no longer like, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it to the top in this career, you know? So this could be a time for you to reorient your entire life such that you can step into yourself more authentically. Of like, again, I've, I've ended my commitments here in this domain. I'm ready to uh, assert myself as I am. But in order to do that, I have to reorient my commitments. So, um, you know, Saturn the first, not easy. You're starting over. I did a TikTok on that. You're still 20 years or ish, maybe 19, 20, 21 years away from reaching your ultimate peak. <clears throat> you know, Saturn on the midheaven. That's a long ways away. And so be patient by all means. Like be very patient because right now your energy is best used looking inward. Public responsibilities are not that enticing to you. 
<clears throat> you're starting from scratch in a lot of ways. And so this full moon is actually help is helping you realize that like, okay, I'm kind of at square one. I'm better off letting go of this old attachment I had to an identity that I, again, I used to be a data analyst. I would way rather be an astrologer. Like, let's just admit that. Let's just say that out loud. And then let's start over and figure out what are the building blocks to ascending from there. Um, and then finally, Pisces rising. Um, so, I, can't, I hate to be like, I hate to be pessimistic. I, 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 I try not to be, but like, I think my, it's hard not to be when there's a full moon conjunct Saturn opposing the sun, right? And this is a chaotic time. Like I, 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 like, I never want to be the person that's telling you that you're perfect. And I never want to be the person also that's telling you that you can't, that you're powerless. It's neither, it's neither, it's neither of those things. Like we all have biases in our chart. We all have things that we are more like that we need to kind of course correct from. We need to err on the side of something else to make up for that bias. But with Saturn, it's, it's pointing out our limits. It's just, uh, it's highlighting our limits. And um, in, for Pisces risings, you know, you have Saturn in the 12th. So it's kind of like Saturn in the 8th, but it's a full surrender. It's like you're literally in, like where Aquarius risings are kind of like at least starting something new. Pisces risings are still shedding and letting go and surrendering these structures or these authority figures. It's like all these authority figures that you used to rely on and look up to are not there for you anymore. It's like, I can't, I can't find them where they go. They disappear. And so you're starting to, you kind of have to go inward and just reflect on like, you know, if I can't feel that, if I can't reach that feeling of security vis-a-vis -vis my career or vis-a-vis -vis a parental figure, then I got to find it within. And in the 12th house, you're actually finding it within the cosmos at large. So you're attaching yourself to the greater universe around you. And I don't want to sound like a cliche, but that's what's happening. So Saturn in the 12th, you just have to keep doing this. You have to keep letting go. But ultimately, it's like you're surrendering not only these structures, but your own ego, right? So it's like you're finding a solid foundation in something outside of yourself. Something that's like in infinite, something that's timeless. So you're hooking into a completely different space here that is non-material, not 3D, but everlasting as a result. Um, Neptune in the first, that where it's been for a long time. Also not the easiest though. It's like you're kind of an energy sponge. You have to enforce boundaries. And this Aquarius full moon is in your 12th house where I was just talking about. And, and that is illuminating these structures that you have to surrender. It's going to be, it's going to be very intense. So it's like, you realize this person's not going to come through. I can't rely on them. And again, that's when you go inward. That's when you go inward and, and form that connection to a muse or some type of divine being. And I'm not saying it has to be spiritual. I'm not saying it has to be religious. It could be, like I said, a creative life force. So some people who have 12th house activity going on in their birth chart, it's like they're just a creator. They're a visionary. They're imaginative. And yes, yeah, Saturn puts a damper on some of those things, but ultimately it's like you're concentrating on that area of life. That's where Saturn forces a commitment here. So like you're really investing in your spiritual creative side by learning to trust learning to trust in something bigger so that you can experience maybe a unity consciousness. So thank you for, for watching this um, August forecast. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot going on in August. Like I said, I'll have a separate video about the Mars Gemini portion of this, but you know, I really, my instincts tell me that the full moon in Aquarius is really the highlight of August you know, that, that will make us all come to terms with our limits in, in the finality of something. There's a finality to that full moon. It's like the 11, it's the 11th hour of something. And it's the 11th hour of a responsibility that you don't need to attach to anymore, whether it's because you've seen it through and it's like, I'm done. Like I was talking about my job 
or if it's realizing that you're just not going to make it to the top. Like you, you really have to sit with that possibility. Like it, because it's like, if you don't listen to this full moon, if you, if you have that gut instinct that it's like, I can't, I'm at, I'm only at base camp too. And I'm not going to, I'm already exhausted. It's not a bad idea to consider an alternate path. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to make it. You might make it higher on the other path, right? I'm not trying to tell you that the long term is, is bad, but I'm saying that the course correction would have to happen now. And, and, and so, uh, you know, and then Saturn is really about self-consciousness, right? It's like a lot of people will go to that, that first peak because they feel like they have to, because they feel like their parents or some authority figure from early in life is making them do that. Like, I have to be a doctor because my parents are doctors. It's like, no, that's nonsensical. Like, no one actually expects you to be a doctor, except for your, your, own, your own mind telling you that their opinion outweighs your own opinion and the opinion of millions of other people who either don't know you or don't actually care if you're a doctor or don't think you should be a doctor. So this is the time to shed the self-consciousness as well, to let go of the self-consciousness and realize what path is actually best for me, what is authentic to me. And I, I guarantee you, if you have the fuel and the passion behind something, which is what the Leo New Moon is about, then you go a lot higher. So thank you uh, again so much for watching this. Um, if you have any questions about my courses, by the way, uh, feel free to email me or check out the link. It's innerworldsastrology.com slash courses. Um, and the courses are going to be um, you know, it's all planned out the slides, it's going to be slides, it's going to be a presentation, there will be some some wiggle room for audience participation and Q&A. Um, but I've designed a course that is extremely efficient. So it's only five courses, but by the end of it, it's like, this is really going to help you grasp the entire like the, the concept and the why of astrology, but also the how how to approach it. In a way, this is about rewiring your brain to tackle it quickly because we weren't taught astrology in school, right? But I figured out a way to kind of, you know, uh, help it like help you kind of reframe, help you reframe your thinking and your thought process so that it feels second nature, that it feels second nature. So if you want to save yourself months or even years of, of doing that on your own, take the course. It's absolutely worth it. Um, but anyways, uh, we'll talk soon.